In Baku, we heard a lot about D rates over the radio and Lewis reporting a lack of power. So I want to get to the bottom of what a D rate is. Andy Cal, please, can you explain? I can have a go. <laughs> um, so a D rate is when we reduce the power of the total power unit and specifically when the MGUK turns off. So the power unit's made up of the V6 internal combustion engine and the MGUK. Um, together, it's about 900 horsepower. Um, the MGUK contributes 160 horsepower of that, so the engine at 740. Um, now the electrical energy that goes to power the MGUK, that comes from kinetic energy under braking and heat energy from the MGUH from the turbine wheel. And they both go to fill the battery up and then we use the energy in the battery to power the MGUK to push the car down the straight whenever the driver wants to go quicker. Now, there isn't always enough energy to be able to always push the car with the MGUK. And that's especially where the lap length is longer. So Baku, a six kilometer lap length, it's very, very hard to make sure you can deploy all the time. In qualifying, we can do it, but on a continuous lap after lap in a race, I don't think any of us can do it. I don't think any of the manufacturers can do it. Canada say where we've just come from, four and a half kilometers, it's easy to do. So you've done some lovely drawings for us on the board here. Can you explain what each of these show and how it affects the car uh, lap by lap and the driver? So, so this is uh, um, three traces, so throttle pedal. So right hand pedal for the drivers. Um, and what I'm showing here is that um, it's coming into a corner. So at full throttle, um, lifts off, he'll go onto the brakes as well. Um, off the pedal for a while and then when he's got enough grip, wants to accelerate out of the corner, will progressively come back on the pedal, again full throttle and down the straight. Now this trace is the um, car velocity, so V car. So it's going quick, comes off the pedal, car slows down, gets enough grip and then the car accelerates out. The velocity increases, the gradient steeper to start off with and then it tails off as the aerodynamic forces balance out with the propulsion. And then at the bottom, the interesting bit, the MGUK. Um, so I've put a center line, a zero line on. Going down the straight when the car's been propelled along, because um, the driver's asking the car to go as fast as possible, it's at the maximum 120 kilowatts, the 160 horsepower that I mentioned before. So 160 horsepower with the 740, so he's got 900 horsepower at this point. He comes off the pedal, it drops down, but it drops down to minus 160 horsepower because the MGUK then is braking, helping slow down the rear axle of the car. Um, then as the driver comes back on the pedal, it swaps back up, pushes the car along. Now what I've shown here is a fairly typical profile that you'd see between turn two and turn three at Baku. Um, the driver's at full pedal, but we've run out of electrical energy, two thirds of the way along that straight. Um, you want to propel the car as much as possible in the early part of the straight because you want to get the car velocity up as quickly as possible. Lap time's all about accelerating the car as hard as possible at the first part of the straight. Um, it derates, so that is an MGUK derate. That's what I'm looking for, the famous derate. Exactly. So that's typical. Exactly. Let's find out what was happening then, because there was a problem, it was derating early. So what did that mean for each of these diagrams? So for each of these, so um, the drivers had got the same demand on the car, so their pedal trace was exactly the same. The V car trace would have been the same, apart from we had an early derate. So we'd incorrectly set up one of the calibrations for one of the engine modes. And what that was giving to both of the drivers was that the MGUK worked initially coming out of the corner, so it was turning off early and then staying at the zero point. And what you then end up with is at that point, the car velocity is like that. You've still got the power of the engine, but what you've lost is the power of the MGUK. So you're 160 horsepower down. So as the driver's going along, he's expecting it to carry on accelerating to get him up to this sort of speed before the K cuts out, um, frustrating for a driver. So what can you do to mitigate against that sort of thing happening later on in the year and potentially along the circuit like Spa, for example? 
Um, we, what we try and do is make sure that we can recover as much electrical energy as possible. So we try and make all the machines as efficient as possible, the turbine as efficient as possible. Um, and then the particular error that we had here, it was an error in our, in our processes, in our pass-off processes. So we're, we're making sure that we're more rigorous in the future and making sure we do more testing at the circuit before we're in the race scenario. Um, because as we all saw with the, with the regulations restricting radio communication, you can't quickly tell the driver what to do to recover that situation.